Recently, I've been going back and buying a ton of original Nintendo DS games, so today I wanted to sit down and talk about why I'm buying them, which specific games I'm buying slash want to buy, and also just kind of talk about my experience with the Nintendo DS as a whole. Let's get into it. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Botox Games, and yes, today we are going to be talking about why I'm buying Nintendo DS games in 2024. It's actually pretty funny. I went back and was watching a video I posted around this time last year where I talked about uh, what 3DS games I was buying in 2023 and why. And in that video, I said something a little ignorant that I want to make amends on. I said, you know, I'd always seen this, this love and adoration for the DS and its library online. And although I grew up with the DS, I never really got the appeal right because at the time you know i would look up a list of every nintendo published first party game and usually that's how i kind of judge a nintendo console based on its first party games and when you look up first party nintendo ds games it's like okay there's a ton of pokemon games which is the the clear highlight in my opinion but then there's a bunch of weird mario spinoffs that aren't necessarily the highest quality and then there's some visual novels and a bunch of like one-off games that almost no one talks about but the reality is those games are there, those really high quality Nintendo DS exclusives that maybe you don't hear about, you just have to dig for them. So recently I've been trying to figure out all of the hidden gems on the platform, so to speak. I'm going through every list of first party games, but also just top 100 lists of every DS game. And it's been kind of enlightening realizing how much variety there actually is now admittedly i still have not played most of these games so whether or not they're actually hidden gems and whether or not that quality is there that remains to be seen but it's just kind of funny because when i was a kid my ds was pretty much used for pokemon a new super mario bros ds and super mario 64 those were the games i played as a kid on the ds in fact i actually have this is the original ds that my sister had and then i kind of inherited it from her when she moved this thing is absolutely obliterated as you can see but hey that just means that just means it got a lot of love and use but yeah, as a kid, I, I mostly kind of stuck to my Pokemon lane and maybe a couple Mario spinoffs here and there with the occasional highlight like Rhythm Heaven being thrown in there as well. So for me to say a year ago that the DS library was maybe a little bit underwhelming wasn't really fair because frankly, I hadn't even experienced the majority of the library. So that's what I've been doing. I've been going back and just checking, once again, first party Nintendo games, but also just games that release on the DS that you know you you hear about them in passing but maybe aren't the most talked about games and i have found that the ds has a pretty extensive library of just like games you don't hear about man you don't hear people talking about wario master of disguise like that is not a game that anybody talks about on the internet or even a game like this, which maybe has more interest right now because of an upcoming Nintendo Switch game. But Super Princess Peach was released for the Nintendo DS, and this is another game that, up until Princess Peach Showtime was announced, I just never really heard anybody talking about this game, and recently I've been seeing a little bit more of that. But my point is, there are just so many games on the DS that are staple Nintendo franchises that seemingly don't get any attention. It's also just kind of funny, too, because... Up to this point, you know, I've been going back and getting all of the Pokemon mainline games that I was missing. And, you know, Pokemon, like I said, it was like my main thing as a kid. So, of course, I had to go back and finally, I, I rebought Pokemon Platinum like a year or two ago. I already had cartridges for Pokemon Black as well as Pokemon Black 2. And in my opinion, these are like the highlights of the Nintendo DS library. Alongside Heart Gold and Soul Silver, of course, which are packed up behind me right now. Uh, the Pokemon games, the, the run of Pokemon games from Gen 4 to Gen 5 on the DS in my opinion are the peak in quality of the pokemon franchise and that's saying something because pokemon is my favorite franchise so as a kid for me just pokemon kind of carried it but beyond just the mainline games there's also spinoffs that i had played some of or maybe just never even played at all so a great example of this this is a game i got from a co-worker at walmart like three years ago i bought it off of him when it was i think it was like 70 bucks so it was still pretty expensive but pokemon conquest this is a tactics-based Pokemon game where it's a crossover with the Three Kingdoms kind of franchise. And, I mean, everything I've ever heard about this game is that it's an incredible tactical RPG. And while I still haven't played it myself, you know, there's just so many examples of games like this on the DS that you hear about, but you never really play yourself. Other examples just for Pokemon would be Pokemon Dash and Pokemon Troze. Those are both games that I've never played. And, and let me be clear, I assume those games probably aren't as good as Pokemon Conquest. But staying in the lane of Pokemon and also talking about something else here really quick. Um, Pokemon Ranger is a franchise that I actually have played. I played uh, Pokemon Ranger 1 as well as Shadows of Lamia. I don't think I ever finished Guardian Signs, which I actually have coming in the mail right now. Because I realized I last year made a video where I bought a bunch of games for my roommate. 
and he had sold me a cartridge only copy of guardian signs so i recently just went on ebay and bought a case and manual to have a nice complete copy of that but while going through the garage getting ready to move i realized i had some cases for some nintendo ds games that i didn't have the cartridges for anymore so i was very happy to find these in the garage and i you know i still need to go back and, and find cartridges for them for some reason on ebay like cartridge only copies are a kind of expensive but also for these two specific games, I feel like a lot of them are just like chewed up in like really bad condition. But I found my original cases for Pokemon Ranger and Shadows of Almy. Of course, these aren't the greatest quality, right? There's like some residue on there. It's fine. This one, this one really has some bad, bad residue going on in the back, but that's fine. I can switch this. And frankly, before we start talking about Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Ranger is probably my favorite Pokemon spinoff series that I've actually like really got into. I enjoy Pokemon Rumble, of course, and Mystery Dungeon is something I've never really gotten super into. I like Gates to Infinity on 3DS, but that's another example. I don't have any of those games on the DS, and I've never played any of them on the DS. And supposedly Explorers of Sky is like the pinnacle of the series, so that's something I'm definitely eyeing as a Pokemon fan to, to go back and experience what most would consider the best Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. But let's talk a little bit more about some of these less known or less talked about games on the DS that you know are cult hits but people aren't preaching from the rooftops about right so recently another code was announced for the Nintendo Switch in fact it's coming out within like a week of when this video is posted so I went back and I bought Trace Memory a game I had heard of I, I think there's like an Ashley Spirit in Smash Bros but Trace Memory is something that I think most Nintendo fans are probably pretty unfamiliar with especially if you're in North America because the sequel which was on the Wii another code that never got localized so the only game we ever got in North America was Trace Memory so I went back and bought that and I played through it and I freaking love the game I'm so excited for the remake and to finally play the sequel that was on Wii because it's part of the Switch collection. But going down that rabbit hole, I was like, okay, well, I'm a Trace Memory fan now, another Code fan now. What else has this developer made? And the developer is named Sing with a C and... There was another game that they had made that I had always heard about in passing, but something I don't, you know, like none of my friends personally had ever talked about this game. It's something I see a Twitter post about every six months. So I picked up this as well. I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet, but Hotel Dusk Room 215 is a visual novel with a really unique, like hand-drawn sketch art style. And from the little bit I've seen of it, this once again just looks right up my alley. So I'm really excited to try this out as well. And it was when I ordered those two games on eBay that I was like really starting to like get in the, the vibe of like, okay... I've played Pokemon, I've played some of the main Mario games on the DS, but let's get really weird. So, another game that I've always heard about on the DS, people always praise this game, but it's something I had never played myself, is Elite Beat Agent, so I also ordered that around the same time, and this is a rhythm game that I frankly haven't played yet, and I, I really don't know much about. I have heard Elite Beat Agent's echoed throughout the internet for the past decade and people always talk about how it's one of the best ds games one of the best rhythm games so i'm really excited to try this because frankly i don't think a game like hotel dusk or a game like elite beat agents really ever stand a chance of getting remade or ported now i would have probably said the same thing about trace memory six months ago and now that game's getting a full remake so never say never but something like this especially like elite beat agents i just really don't don't see that happening. These next two actually aren't first party, but I do want to mention them. So I actually found both of these at Goodwill over the course of 2023. So once again, not games I bought in 2024, but kind of games that got me thinking about my DS collection and how I wanted to grow it and expand it with quality titles that I had never played before. Uh, my girlfriend found this one at Goodwill, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. I think I played the demo for this through the Nintendo channel on the Wii. If you remember on the Wii, you could like load up the Nintendo channel and then using your Wii beam up a demo to your DSi through like the download play or something. It was very weird. It was actually the first way I played Rhythm Heaven as well as Guardian Signs, I believe. I think Ghost Trick was another one of those demos, but I was a stupid kid and I had no idea what I was doing. But if you're unaware, Ghost Trick actually got ported to the Nintendo Switch this year. And while I'm not super familiar with whether or not that's a great port or anything, I feel like if I were to play Ghost Trick, I would probably want to play it on the DS, right? Like, this is a game, this is a puzzle game that is made for the touchscreen. Let me know in the comments below, is the Switch port worth playing over the DS version? But considering I already have the DS version, I feel like that's probably the version I should play. And then this one I found at Goodwill Outlet back, in, I think, in October, Aliens Infestation. This is a game published by Sega, and when I grabbed it, I was like, oh, shovelware, cool. But then I looked at the back, and I realized, guys, this is a apparently really good 
2D Metroidvania, I believe, from the people that make Shantae. This is from WayForward. And apparently, like, this is just a super hidden gem on the DS that no one ever talks about. It fetches a pretty high price on the resale markets. And I had no idea. I had never, ever heard of this game or realized that people care about it. So that is another one that I'm super interested in going back to. And then one final third-party game I have sitting in my lap here. I just grabbed it because I think it's kind of interesting. I think Good Vibes Gaming, uh, John Cartwright made a video, I think I think last year, right? Talking about the differences here. But Sonic Colors on the DS, I love Sonic Colors on the Wii. It's one of the only Sonic games I truly enjoyed. Sonic Colors on the DS is a completely unique game, so I've always wanted to try this version. And something else worth mentioning as we go over these next handful of games... I realized while doing this research and going on eBay and kind of evaluating prices, most DS games are not that expensive. There are a couple games, right, that are going to be pushing 50 or 60. But for the most part, a lot of the main Nintendo IP, you can get those games for below MSRP. And in my opinion, if a game is 15 years old and you can get it for less than MSRP. So for example here, Golden Sun Dark Dawn, I got a complete copy of. Uh, well, I had the case and I bought a cartridge from my roommate last year, so I completed it through that way. Um, if you can get a complete copy of a DS game for less than $40, which is what they retailed for, that's not too bad in my opinion. Or actually, didn't DS games cost 30 Either way, it's close. It's not like, it's not freaking GameCube prices, right? It's still pretty reasonable. These next two are games that I bought a really long time ago, but I, once again, just to reiterate, I bought them because they were so cheap, and I've, I've always wanted to play them or at least try them out, and that is both of the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games that released on the DS physically. So this is March of the Minis, as well as Mini Land Mayhem. Now, I have played Tipping Stars on the Wii U. I played Minis on the Move only 3DS. That was an eShop game, but I've never actually played either of these or the original one on GBA, which is actually getting a remake. So both of these, I was looking at my shelf the other day, and I was like, huh. Maybe I should try to play these before that new remake comes out. And yeah, if you go on eBay, I think you can get these for like 15 or 20 bucks a pop. Which for a first party Nintendo game that is like 15 plus years old, really not that bad. Kirby is a series that I really got into back in 2022 when Forgotten Land came out. I, that was like the, the awakening moment for me where I became like a proper Kirby fan and I repented for my sins against the franchise beforehand. Because Kirby was a franchise kind of similar to Sonic to me where every time I played a game I was like, eh. It's not really for me. I don't really like this. But something clicked when Forgotten Land came out. I went back and played Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot. Loved those games. Epic Yarn I've always loved. And even then, I, I went back and replayed Star Allies. And I even enjoyed that game, which most people don't like. So pretty much every Kirby game that's come out since 2011 or 2010 when the Return to Dreamland came out, I've played every Kirby game since then, and I like all of them. But there's a lot of blind spots for me on the Game Boy Advance and on the DS, so both of these games I'm very excited to play. Kirby Maz Attack I always thought looked really interesting as a kid. You control a bunch of different Kirbys, and I played like 10 minutes of it, and I didn't like what I played of it, so I need to give it a more fair uh, chance here, but this is one that I've always wanted to go back to and properly play through, as well as Kirby and the Canvas Curse. So this is the first in a series of two games, if you aren't aware. Rainbow Curse came out on the Wii U, and that was actually one of the first Kirby games I played and really enjoyed. I, li I like the stupid Kirby games. 2D platformer Kirby is great, and Return of Dreamland Deluxe, Planet Robobot, and Forgotten Land. Those are like the top three Kirby games in my opinion, but I like the dumb Kirby games. I like Rainbow Curse. I like Super Kirby Clash. I like these weird experimental Kirby games. Games. So this is one I've always wanted to go back to and try it as well. And then of course there's also Squeak Squad, which I played on Wii U Virtual Console back in the day, but I don't really remember that much from it. And then Superstar Ultra, which a lot of people kind of hail as like the best Kirby game. I've never played that game, so that's what I'm definitely eyeing up on eBay right now. This I bought very cheap with a couple of other games that haven't come in the mail yet, so I picked up a complete copy of Yoshi's Island DS. This is a game I had as a kid, and it's actually one of the few DS games that weren't Pokemon that I did have back then, and I really enjoyed it. I don't know if it actually holds up, because I remember at the time thinking, wow... I enjoy this more than Super Mario Advance 2 because I had that as a kid. And I remember thinking, wow, Yoshi's Island DS is really cool. I like how you have all the different types of babies. You got Baby DK there, which is just adorable. And this was like 20 bucks on eBay. So uh, getting a game I had as a child and, and maybe revisiting it soon is something I'm very excited about. But at the same time, and they haven't come yet, I'll put up pictures. I realized some other just less, lesser talked about DS games are very cheap. So DK Jungle Climber is a game I've never seen a single person on the internet talk about, as well as Star Fox Command. I mean, there was a Star Fox game with online multiplayer on the DS. And as someone who was a little bit too young in like 2005, right? I would have been five years old then. That's really appealing to me. 
just to go back and just to see what was going on with the DS back in those days. Another game I thrifted here at Diddy Kong Racing for the DS. And then I also have two gifts that I've gotten from my girlfriend over the past like six months. So this was a birthday gift back in August. The Legendary Starfy, another just like solo game that not many people talk about, but I've always really wanted to give a shot. Even back when I was a kid, I thought Starfy just looked adorable. As well as another game that I had as a kid but sold, so huge shout out to her for rebuying it for me for Christmas this year, Rhythm Heaven for the Nintendo DS. Rhythm Heaven is one of my favorite Nintendo franchises. I think two of my biggest like selling regrets as a kid was selling Rhythm Heaven for the DS, and then especially Rhythm Heaven Fever on the Wii. I remember buying that game for like a dollar used at GameStop because they just couldn't get rid of it in 2012, 2013 because no one cared about the Wii at that point. That's a very very expensive Wii game now so that's one that's on the list to get eventually too but even beyond every game that I just talked about there's still so many things that I would like to try out for the first time I already mentioned Wario Master of Disguise which once again is a game no one talks about but I've never played WarioWare Touched or WarioWare Do It Yourself I couldn't find my copy of it I guess I packed it up a little bit prematurely but Metroid Prime Hunters is something I'm very interested in playing this year as well as Metroid Prime Pinball I like pinball games I like Metroid kind of just seems like a perfect fit for me and even outside of first party nintendo games there's a lot of stuff that i want to get soon from third parties specifically if you know me you know i'm a big dang weeb specifically dragon ball and naruto those are like two of my favorite things ever and i've always loved those games well when i was a kid i had dragon ball origins and that was always super cool to me because you know on console you always get the dragon ball z story right you go from raditz to frieza to cell etc but on the ds we got two dragon ball origins games where you play as kid goku going through the original dragon ball story and as a kid even though i love dragon ball z i've actually kind of always preferred kid goku story so having those games on the ds was super exciting but there's also stuff like attack of the saiyans i think there's a card game there's supersonic warriors there's probably some other stuff i'm forgetting about and then for naruto i mean there's the whole ninja council series the path of a ninja series which is like a turn-based rpg i believe there's just a lot of anime games on the ds that I really haven't experienced that much of. So yeah, to kind of just conclude this video, this is a very rambly topic. I am very Nintendo DS pilled right now, and I'm very excited to finally kind of expand my horizons and fully understand and learn what the Nintendo DS has to offer versus something like the 3DS or even, you know, I think what's interesting for me is I'm pretty much caught up on Switch in terms of games that I want to play. There's always going to be a couple things here and there, right? But in terms of first-party Switch games, I've played most of what I want to play. In terms of Wii U first-party games, I've played basically everything I want to play except for Xenoblade X. And in terms of 3DS, I've played pretty much everything I want to play except for Atlas games. But when you go back a little bit further, when you go back to the Wii and then especially the DS, there is just so much I missed out on because... I don't know if Nintendo wasn't marketing them right at the time. You know, I was getting Nintendo Power. I was getting Shonen Jump, which had gaming ads and stuff at the time. I was on that Nintendo channel on my Wii, like I mentioned. I feel like a lot of these games just kind of... I don't know. As a kid, I just didn't even know most of these things existed. So I am very excited to go back and play through a ton of these DS games. Of course, I will be doing videos on them as I go through, depending on if, you know, I think I have enough to say specifically. Like if I go back and play the Pokemon spinoffs, I'll do a video on that. Maybe I'll do like a compilation video on like a bunch of things at once, like Star Fox Command and Metroid Prime Pinball, because I don't really think those could be full videos maybe i'll stream them or something that'd be really fun so let me know what you think down in the comments below are you fond of the nintendo ds's library or are you like me at least me a year ago where i thought the ds library was kind of lacking but now that i've done some research you know i'm realizing wow there's actually kind of a lot that i want to play and hey if you have any recommendations for me for first party nintendo stuff but also jrpgs you know dragon quest is a franchise i would love to get into last year i've really gotten into final fantasy in a big way where i played a lot of final fantasy games dragon quest is another series now that i've played dragon quest monsters of the dark prince i would love to go back and play four five and six on the ds so if you have any recommendations feel free to drop them down below of course subscribe here for more nintendo reviews news coverage all of that stuff follow me on twitter at botox games and join my discord that is linked in the description down below until next time folks peace